Hey guys, Jordan with the Young Turks and TYT Politics. Hope you're having a good day. Uh, I just did a Facebook video on uh, TYT Politics Facebook page, but I uh, wanted to update you here on the Young Turks page. Uh, a lot of things going on uh, related to Standing Rock. Uh, the last two days have been very fast paced, and uh, there's a lot of reason to believe the police, uh, I call the oil police, as well as the legal system here, is trying to railroad um, and trying to squash uh, people from coming back to Standing Rock. Uh, I think that they have seen uh, leaders like Chase Iron Eyes, as well as LaDonna Brave Bull Allard, who have been urging people, water protectors, to come back to Standing Rock and to fight uh, nonviolently uh, and in prayer. And I believe uh, they are taking measures right now to try and uh, squash any growing um, uh, nonviolent protest. Uh, numbers have been reduced here, and uh, Chase, as well as LaDonna, have been very vocal, uh, frankly, against the Standing Rock Sioux Tribe in saying, come back, come back, we need you in this fight. So let me give you the sequence of events of what's been happening here. So yesterday, um, Chase Iron Eyes, as well as uh, a lot of other water protectors, had moved from uh, the Ocheti Sakoan camp, which was renamed... Uh, Ocheti Oyate camp. This is the main camp where, you know, thousands have come over the last few months from all around the country, all around the world. Uh, they moved to higher ground pretty much outside of the main camp across Highway 1806 on top of a hill. And they were going to make that uh, a new camp. They called it Little Child Camp. Uh, it was on top of a hill right over the Backwater Bridge. The Backwater Bridge is basically uh, where all this horrible stuff has happened. The police blockade has been down on Black Backwater Bridge for months. November 20th, that's where the horrific scene with the water cannons and the tear gas and the grenades coming from police on unarmed water protectors. Uh, so they held this camp. Well, the police know that Chase Iron Eyes is a leader in camp. They have been watching his live streams where he is urging water protectors to come back and that we can make room for you and we need to fight against the Dakota Access Pipeline. So uh, as soon as they caught wind that he was organizing a new camp, they shut that shit down quickly. Um, so they came in, they arrested Chase, they arrested 73 other water protectors. I'm actually in Mandan, North Dakota right now, uh, waiting to hear if there's even going to be a hearing for Chase and those water protectors. First, I was told 9 a.m., then I was told after lunch. Now it's not, cl not clear if they even have the paperwork for Chase. These are all stall tactics to keep Chase, as well as other water protectors, in jail. Uh, we don't have the paperwork or, you know, those kinds of things. So uh, I believe that in raiding uh, Chase's camp yesterday, uh, in raiding, um, they're trying to railroad Chase. And now all of a sudden they don't have paperwork. Uh, we don't even know the charges yet for Chase. They, the police say uh, he's on private land. That's his, the camp that he set up was on private land. Of course, Chase is saying, uh, this is treaty land. Uh, this is not private land. I'm not going to be like the media that says, Chase says this. The police say this. You figure it out. No, it isn't private land. It's treaty land. If America is a country of laws, we have treaties that have been crapped on over the last hundreds of years against the Native Americans. Their land has been stolen. This is their treaty land. All the area around the main camp and all along Cannonball is um, treaty land. And that is the case Chase and other water protectors made yesterday when they were arrested. So that's number one with Chase. I'm waiting to see if there is even going to be a, whole, uh, a, a hearing for Chase. Now, they did that yesterday, uh, rounding up his camp, shutting it down, and then arresting him. Right now, there is ATF officers, alcohol, tobacco, and... F excuse me. Excuse me. I don't want to jump. So last night, last night, there was a secret meeting between the governor of North Dakota and Cannonball, North Dakota residents. Cannonball is where uh, the camp technically is, Cannonball District. There was a meeting between D Governor uh, Doug Berg Berg Bergen, I believe his name is. He's the new governor. And Cannonball residents. Media was not allowed in this meeting and apparently they were they did not have a pro uh, excuse me uh anti dakota access pipeline residents from cannonball in this meeting it was all pro pipeline and anti uh water protectors people in this meeting with the governor 
So that was last night. Again, a secret meeting. Uh, the governor, Cannonball residents. The Cannonball residents have presumably been complaining about the, the, the road closure, which isn't the water protector's fault. It is the police who have barricaded and blocked off Highway 1806 for months. Um, they have um, complained, you know, the usual things. They, they complain about drugs and other things in the area. Uh, they call the, the protesters rowdy and agitators and hippies and all these things. They don't, they don't, you know, they don't want the water protectors in their community is basically it. So that happened last night. So are you following me? We got the raid yesterday of Chase's camp. Chase is a leader. The police don't want him leading. The police don't want him. Um, they don't want him urging more people to come back. And then you have uh, right now there all of a sudden ATF officers, BIA officers, Army Corps of Engineers officers are in Sacred Stone camp, which in my last uh, Facebook video I just told you is private land owned by LaDonna Brave Bull Allard. LaDonna Brave Bull Allard is a leader uh, in the Standing Rock movement. She owns this land. Uh, according to her, she has told me her, her brothers and sisters own 22 acres of this land. There is certain sections of the land that the Army Corps does own. It's called a yurt village. That is where they have uh, oversight. But they are currently in her land, which she owns by law. They don't have the right to inspect her land. They went in without a warrant. They were not invited by LaDonna. And they went in her land. And they are assessing the floodplains, which, let me translate that for you, is code for we're about to raid your camp. That's what that means. They're going to try to find any little thing. They're going to try to find, uh, you know, whether it's things that make it unsafe for people to be there. They're going to try to find paraphernalia, maybe drugs, maybe, uh, you know, all sorts of things. That's why the ATF is there, the Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms Unit. So she does not own, uh, the BIA said she owns 0.62 acres. That is not correct. She owns 22 acres of the land. So that's not correct. The BIA, the police are either misinformed or intentionally uh, misinforming the public. So what you have here, they're, they're currently there now. Uh, there was a live stream up. Uh, Johnny Dangers is there. He's a, a water protector and he live streams from a lot of places, does good work. Uh, I don't see his live stream anymore, but an officer uh, on the live stream I heard say we are here to, quote, assess the floodplain. Assessing the floodplain, I don't know if they're actually there to assess the floodplain or to get people out of this camp. Because, again, just like Chase has been doing live streams, LaDonna Bravebull Allard has talked to the media and done live streams urging people to come back, saying she will make room at Sacred Stone Camp. So they don't have a warrant to go into LaDonna's land. They have no probable cause to go into LaDonna's land. And I need to report to you accurately uh, what LaDonna told me. Um, so, you know, I, I, I can't sugarcoat things if it sounds bad for the tribe. Uh, LaDonna has told me that Chairman Dave Archambald, uh, the chairman of the Standing Rock Sioux Tribe, gave uh, these officers permission to go in to her land. Um, I have not spoken with Archambald or tribal officials, so I can't tell you uh, their response to that. I can only tell you what LaDonna has told me, but LaDonna uh, used the words, he sold us out. That was what she told me, he sold us out. So I don't know what the rationale uh, for the chairman to tell people, uh, tell these officers to go in and inspect this land. We have to remember that Chairman Archambald has instructed water protectors um, has instructed water protectors at Ocheti Sokoan camp that they have to leave. They have to leave the camp, and I believe they have till middle of February to leave that camp. So uh, Chairman Archambald and the tribe uh, want water protectors out of that main camp. Uh, the reasons for that, uh, the reasons for that, we do not know. But I happen to know from my own sources of reporting that the Chairman Archambald has met with the governor and uh, DAPL security officers in the past. Now, that does not mean he is corrupt. He is the chairman of the tribe, so it makes sense that he would be meeting with uh, the governor, uh, DAPL security workers, trying to negotiate, trying to open dialogue. Um, that doesn't, you know, I'm not, I am not accusing him of, of corruption. I'm telling you that I know he has met with the governor. I know he has met with DAPL. And according to LaDonna, uh, the tribe, 
gave permission for the police to go in there. And an officer also said on the live stream um, that they have permission from the Standing Rock Sioux tribe uh, to be there. Uh, and sources of mine that usually steer me in the right direction have told me uh, there are tribal representatives also uh, that are taking part in this flood assessment. So uh, you have the raid yesterday of Chase's camp, who is a leader urging people to come back. Then you have a secret meeting between the governor and ca residents of Cannonball last night where the media was not invited. You have Chase and other water protectors in jail overnight. And now, of course, as of 20 minutes ago, the, we were told there's no paperwork for them yet, which might mean um, which might mean there's no hearings today. And now you have, uh, I am not calling it a raid at this moment because as I was watching the live stream about a half hour ago, uh, it was calm and the police were not brutalizing anyone. Uh, the police did make threats once they entered uh, unwelcomely. They were not welcomed in. Uh, they did make threats, touch us, you know, anything like that. Um, you'll be arrested. So the police are not, you know, innocent butterflies in this. But I spoke with LaDonna Brave Bull Allard, who is not there. She told me, um, she told me that the, uh, she did not give permission for them to enter, that Dave Archambault, chairman of the tribe, did, and that, quote, he sold us out. So I could only report to you um, what I'm told accurately. Uh, I will try to get in touch with the chairman and the tribe to see what is the reason that they are giving permission. Uh, maybe, they gave, maybe they gave permission for... Uh, no, no, it wouldn't make sense. They, they don't have grounds to give permission for anything because it's not tribal land, it's LaDonna's. Um, uh, according, uh, Keith Fixico uh, is live now if you want to uh, see a live stream. I, uh, I was, I'm in Mandan uh, waiting to cover Chase Iron Eye's hearing. But I will say to me, uh, you know, you got to read the tea leaves here. It's very evident that these Apple security workers, these police They've been in the tank for this oil company since day one. They have been brutalizing unarmed water protectors. Have there been isolated cases of water protectors, water protectors maybe lighting vehicles on fire or throwing things at police officers? Yes. I'm not going to sugarcoat and lie to you. Uh, I, have never, I have never personally seen it, so I always make that clear. But I have heard from people that it has happened in the past. But those are isolated incidents. I don't want to report that as if this is a, a, a violent protest because it's not. These are isolated incidents. And sometimes when police vehicles are burnt on fire, it is strategic to keep the police away <laughs> because these are police that are tear gassing you, that are uh, shooting rubber bullets at you, that are um, grenades. We know that a poor 21-year-old girl almost lost her arm. Another girl, a Native American, uh, lost her eyesight in one eye because of tear gas. So sometimes uh, water protectors are lighting things on fire for their own protection to keep the police away. But... Uh, we should say this is a police. This is an obvious police tactic to shut down leaders of the No Dapo movement, like Chase Iron Eyes, like Ladonna Brave Bull Allard, raid their camps, uh, possibly arrest them. In Chase's case, uh, Ladonna Brave Bull Allard is not at the land, but I spoke with her. She told me 22 acres, her and her brothers own. Uh, they are on her land, not Army Corps land. She did point out that Dave Archambald gave them permission to go. In So uh, there is explaining that needs to be done why the tribe ex allowed anybody into that land. Um, just because, it, you know, the, obviously Standing Rick Sioux Tribe uh, has great members and uh, Tribal Council has a lot of uh, strong people. They know a lot of things I don't know, we don't know. But the bottom line is, it's private land. It's LaDonna Brabel Allard's land. So they don't have a right to go in there. There's no warrant. But... This is North Dakota, and as I've shown you repeatedly, the law apparently does not apply here. It only applies if it protects oil companies, banks, and Republicans, and corrupt Democrats. So I'm going to stay on it. I'm, I'm going to try to talk to people, see what's going on there. Uh, assessing the floodplains could be an appetizer to actually raiding it and kicking people out. They could say they found... They could find, they could make up shit that they found. Uh, this, this, there is no accountability for police here. And obviously we have a president on the police and the oil company's side. So uh, continue watching. 
Uh, again, I think this is an obvious uh, way to railroad Chase Iron Eyes, LaDonna Brayville Allard, shut down the leadership. They're doing this to countless other water protectors that they're Trump, they're concocting fake charges. Um, so I'm going to continue staying on it, and uh, I'll be live again later uh, with more updates. As well as the legal system here is trying to railroad um, and trying to squash uh, people from coming back to Standing Rock. Uh, I think that they have seen uh, leaders like Chase Iron Eyes, as well as LaDonna Brave Bull Allard, who have been urging people, water protectors, to come back to Standing Rock and to fight uh, nonviolently uh, and in prayer. And I believe uh, they are taking measures. Chase Iron Eyes, as well as uh, a lot of other water protectors, had moved from uh, the Ochetti Sakoan camp, which was renamed uh, Ochetti Oyate camp. This is the main camp where you know thousands have come over the last few months from all around the country, all around the world. Uh, they moved to higher ground, pretty much outside of the main camp, across Highway 1806 on top of a hill. And they were going to make that uh, a new camp. They called it Little Child Camp. Uh, it was on top of a hill o right over the Backwater Bridge. The Backwater Bridge is basically uh, where all this horrible stuff has happened. The police blockade has been down on Black Backwater Bridge for months. November 20th, that's where the horrific scene with the water cannons and the tear gas and the grenades coming from police on unarmed water protectors. Uh, just right now to try and uh, squash any growing um, uh, nonviolent protest. Uh, numbers have been reduced here, and uh, Chase, as well as LaDonna, have been very vocal, uh, frankly, against the Standing Rock Sioux tribe in saying, come back, come back, we need you in this fight. So let me give you the sequence of events of what's been happening here. So yesterday... Um, Hey guys, Jordan with the Young Turks and TYT Politics. Hope you're having a good day. Uh, I just did a Facebook video on uh, TYT Politics Facebook page, but I uh, wanted to update you here on the Young Turks page. Uh, a lot of things going on uh, related to Standing Rock. Uh, the last two days have been very fast paced, and uh, there's a lot of reason to believe the police, uh, I call the oil police, 